India would be thoroughly disappointed with the way they started their campaign in the World Test Championship final. Uh, Rohit Sharma won the toss, elected to bowl. Well, that itself raised a few questions. You know, obviously there were overcast conditions. India were tempted by those conditions to play four fast bowlers. A lot of questions around Arashwin. Should he have played the number one test bowler in the world? Should India have batted first? Remember, a lot of uh, experts will tell you that the pitches in England tend to quicken up as the game progresses. So there were a lot of questions around their tactics right at the start. But what they did after winning the toss was really squandering that advantage. Um, the first hour, Shami and Siraj were probing with that new ball, putting the Australian top order in a bit of spot. Uh, Siraj got Usman Khwaja out for a duck. Khwaja, of course, the second highest run scorer in the World Test Championship. Remember, he scored that massive, massive, majestic 100 in the final test of the Border Gavaskar Trophy in Ahmedabad. Getting him out for a duck early was really important for India. But David Warner played a gut innings along with Manas Labushain. They weathered the early storm, paving the way for one of the great partnerships in modern times in Test cricket. Really, when Steve Smith joined forces with Travis Head, that kind of deflated the Indian bowling attack. 251 unbeaten runs between Smith and Head, who, by the way, got to his first Test century outside Australia. And Smith is now just five runs short of uh, his 31st Test match 100. So there is plenty happening right for Australia and there's plenty going wrong for India. What are those mistakes? First off, when you're playing with four fast bowlers, should you have given that kind of an extended spell to Shami and Siraj in the first hour? After that, Ravindra Jadeja did not come on to bowl till the 38th over of the Australian innings. By then, the sun was baking on the pitch. You would have hoped for your spinner to come and get some kind of purchase from that pitch. Omesh Yadav was very ordinary, really. He's, of course, bowled some stellar spells for India in the past. Shardul Thakur came on, looked promising, looked threatening in patches, troubled Manus Labushain, and obviously that was a lucky break when he got that wicket of David Warner, when he gloved it down um, to Kona Bharat, who took a brilliant catch behind the stumps. But by and large, India, like I said, pretty, pretty ordinary because you would have expected a lot more from the likes of Shami and Siraj. Like I said, they started well, but again, squandered those early advantages. Rohit Sharma's field placement, not putting enough pressure on the Australians. You know, they tried that leg side trap for a couple of those batters and then they quickly abandoned those tactics as well. There were tactical blunders. Was Ash not playing Ashwin a tactical blunder? We'll have to wait and watch. But again, Ashwin doesn't have the greatest of numbers in Test cricket in England. But again, you know, there will be questions asked uh, when you leave out the world's number one Test bowler out of the final of the Test Championship. There's plenty of time for India to come back. India have staged some remarkable comebacks in uh, Test cricket overseas. But then this side is looking a little, um, you know, disoriented. Their body language has been disappointing. Rohit Sharma, should he be a little more chirpy? Uh, remember the times of Virat Kohli as captain, Ravi Shastri as coach. You could see a different kind of energy with that team. This team, you know, this obviously the same team more or less, but that spunk, it has to really come back. So plenty of cricket, like I said, left in this final of the World Test Championship. Can these guys come back and shut Australia out of this test match to win their first ICC trophy in 10 years? This was Rajeshi Gupta bringing this to you for India Today YouTube.